Hey guys, Grumpy here with another tier list. So to cap off the previous series, um, we are doing another tier list. This tier list is going to be on the vanilla weapon systems in Star Sector. Um, this does not include any strike craft or any exotic weapons. These are just basic weapons that you find throughout the game. Um, like always, this list is subjective. It's going to be based on my experience. I'm not even going to pretend like this is going to be an objective list. I will probably bottom tier your favorite weapons and I will overrate uh, weapons that you've probably never used before as it goes. Uh, if you would like to explain why my opinions are incorrect in the comments, go right ahead. I have a blast reading them every single time. Alright, so kicking off the list, we have a strong contender, the Antimatter Blaster. Great energy weapon, occupies a small energy slot. Um, I used it to great effect in the previous series, which was Silent Night. Go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. Um, just imparts a ton of damage. It costs a lot of flux, so you have to be careful when you fire this, um, and you have to make every shot count. But it is a phenomenal weapon system. Next up is the Annihilator Rocket. Um, don't really like this missile system. In general, I'm a huge fan of missiles, um, not necessarily the Annihilator. The reason being is it fires um, missiles, like weak missiles in a random direction. And the purpose of it is suppression, but it, it, not really. Um, in practice, that's not really what it does. It does overload an opponent's point defense, so you can use it like that as like almost a screener for your better missiles. But then again, you shouldn't really be firing your missiles at targets unless you've already eliminated their point defense or they're overloaded. So for that reason, the Annihilator doesn't really serve a good purpose. Maybe D tier, because at least at the end of the day, it's high explosive damage. Um, the single harpoon is pretty good if you can get it. Um, obviously, you go ahead and reach for the double, which wears it out. Or rather, the triple. Um, this is double. It shows as one, which is atypical. And usually, missiles are pretty good at how many um, they fire. But go ahead and go for the triple instead of the double uh, harpoon. It's worth it. Um, in general, the more missiles that you get, the better because they scale better with expanded missile racks and then also uh, missile specialization. So you definitely want to get the higher missile count in that tier if you can get it. Uh, that said, the Harpoon is also really good. This is the medium variant. Um, same thing as the regular Harpoon, just brings more missiles to the fight. Occupies a medium slot where medium missiles are a little more competitive. Uh, you just have to be uh, cognizant of uh, other choices that you have in medium missiles. Um, next up we have the Mark 9 autocannon. I don't really use this weapon system. Uh, it's good. It's a large ballistic weapon. It does kinetic damage at a decent range. Um, it's kind of like an entry. It doesn't cost that much OP. And uh, I don't know the stats off the top of my head, but I believe it's flux efficient. Um, does well on like a Dominator Onslaught Conquest. Uh, I just, I don't really use those ships, so I don't really use this weapon. Next up we have the heavy autocannon. It's okay, same thing. Medium ballistic weapon does kinetic damage. Um, I don't really use this weapon system either. Typically, my kinetic damage comes from missiles, namely the Sabo missile. Where is it at? That's a missile somewhere. But yeah, the Sabos, that's where I get my kinetic damage from, or I'll get it from cheaper sources uh, like the heavy machine gun, which is next. Um, so the. Arbalus or the uh, heavy autocannon is okay. I think it has a range of like 600 or 700. Um, it's all right. Medium ballistic. Um, medium ballistics are also a competitive slot. There's a lot of really good weapon systems, but uh, it's good on most ships. Uh, actually, I'll move it to move it to high B tier. I might rearrange it. We'll see. Uh, next up, we have the heavy machine gun. I love this weapon. It is ridiculously flux efficient. Um, it does have a short range and it does uh, prioritize its point defense, so it prioritize missiles and strike craft. However, if you put this on um, a ship that has like safety overrides or a ship that's already naturally short range, then it just shines because um, you'll be close enough to an enemy ship that usually strike craft doesn't get in between you and another ship and usually um missiles aren't really a concern at close range because you'll have your shields up anyway and they'll just either splash against you or you can tank a missile if you need to and then keep firing this very flux efficient weapon 
this weapon cheats on damage um it does a lot of kinetic damage for like no flux cost so it pairs well with everything um would strongly recommend it and also i play a lot of safety overrides builds so that's why you'll see this on like pretty much every ship next up we have the heavy mauler um phenomenal weapon system s tier yeah yeah of course s tier uh is a range of a thousand does high explosive damage it fires in three round bursts um if you put this on a ship with accelerated ammo feeder it fires even faster and really what the heavy mauler shines at is it's just like it's a looming threat like it puts constant pressure on enemy ships um they have to keep their shields up at all times and if they keep their shields up well that's just an opportunity to up overload them and if they don't keep their shields up they don't respect the heavy mauler they'll just take chip damage the entire fight um one of the drawbacks is that you can't fight you can't fire your maulers through your own ships um you'll end up damaging your own ships um so if you are going to use something like a heavy mauler or a hyper velocity driver which is somewhere in the list um where is it at hyper velocity driver if you're going to use these two weapon systems um you really need to maximize the range to give its most like as many clear lines of sight to the enemy um you can't use this if your fleet is condensed or you're fighting like a faster enemy fleet that's going to surround you uh heavy mortar d tier uh there's so many other better um medium ballistics in the game that you never really use this uh, i mean maybe in the early game you can kind of use it it does high explosive damage which is valuable but it's inaccurate and it shoots really slowly so yeah. find a better alternative it just gets outclassed so easily uh, next up is the Hellboard Cannon. I really love this weapon system because it's a large ballistic, um, imparts a ton of high explosive damage, and just like the Heavy Mauler has a very impressive range, um, the enemy has to keep their shields up with the Hellboard on the battlefield because the, um, the follow-up shot from the Hellboard is what deals the ton of damage to the enemy ships. Um, Two, uh, two shots from a Hellboard will destroy a frigate, three will destroy a cruiser, or sorry, three will destroy a destroyer. Um, like, it does a ton of damage. So the enemy has to be careful with this on the battlefield. Um, same thing for you, look out for pirate ships, um, Atlas, converted Atlases, because they'll usually sport a Hellboard, and uh, the converted Atlas ship does have accelerated ammo feeder, so it'll rapid fire Hellboy shots, which can damage you uh, pretty significantly pretty quickly if you're not paying attention. Uh, next up is the Hephaestus. It is an okay weapon system, just but like the Mark 9 and the heavy auto can, I just never use it. Um, does high explosive damage, has a decent range, decent accuracy. I have no good feelings about it one way or another. Uh, next up is the high intensity laser. I love this weapon. It, it, it might be bait, it might not be good, but I enjoy using it. Uh, first of all, it's a beam weapon, so it has all the advantages of being a beam weapon in that it has a very long range, um, it is extremely accurate, and it is just constant pressure. Uh, the enemy the ai has to address this uh it can't ignore it and usually the way it'll address it is it'll just keep its shields up even well past where it shouldn't um and then when it drops its shields you just watch that armor decay so rapidly it's so good a uh, large energy weapon so slight competition in that slot but not really um just know like what you're what you're building your fleet towards if you want like long range and a lot of like um kind of like a pike strategy i call it then high intensity laser does definitely con deserve your consideration um you slap it on a paragon or a champion with integrated targeting unit you're covering like half the battlefield with this weapon system so it's nice it is a beam weapon so it doesn't do any hard flux damage but you can work around that through using um missiles or carriers so uh, speaking of missiles, I believe this is the Merv. Uh, it's been cut. I apologize for the varying picture quality, by the way. Like, I tried to size them, but they were all different sizes, and Tearless Maker kept shrinking them, so I was like, 
whatever. Um, next up is the Merv. The Merv did get nerfed, unfortunately. Um, the way it works is it, it's a large missile system that shoots one large missile. That missile splits into several small missiles, and then those missiles collapse on a target. Um, the individual missiles that fire out of the large one, uh, their damage was reduced, and I believe the missile count of the Merv was also reduced as well. So it used to be an auto take in the past, like you would know to take a Merv in your large missile slot, but nowadays there's other choices that make sense to use. Um, that being said, the Merv paired with ECCM package is ridiculously good. It's night and day the difference. Um, the reason I put ECCM package with the Merv is because your AI is going to fire the Merv at anything, including frigates. And without ECCM package, it's going to miss the frigate like all day. But with ECCM package, it'll probably destroy that frigate in one Merv. The reason this is so important is because um, you're trading time. Um, you're trading missiles for efficiency, right? So your capital ships and cruisers are probably going to get surrounded anyway. And you're, you need a solution for that. Now, you can solve it two ways. You can either hold the ship back to escort your capitals and cruisers, which is typically what you're supposed to do. Um, but I play more aggressively where all my frigates and destroyers are, you know, towards the enemy, not really hanging back. So, um, what happens in that situation is uh, your capital ship has to spin around. It has to fire. It has to waste resources trying to deal with this annoying frigate that keeps flying around it. What the Merv does though with ECCM package is if it connects with the frigate, it'll probably destroy it and then your capital ship can move on to what it's supposed to be doing, which is supporting your push into the enemy line. So uh, for that recommend for that reason I highly recommend the Merv and then I also recommend ECCM package. Um, you don't need it if you're going against other capital ships and cruisers because it can't dodge the Merv anyway, but if you're going against like a smaller fleet, ECCM package is just so good. Uh, next up we have the hypervelocity driver. Pretty much everyone uses this weapon system. Does a lot of kinetic damage. Um, also does EMP damage, which is really good. It's an undervalued stat. Um, or it's under undervalued damage type that not a lot of people are focusing on. Um, and it has a ridiculous range. Um, same as the heavy mauler has a range of 1000, which can be scaled further with the integrated targeting unit, dedicated targeting core, um, ballistic mastery, right? Like you can get some crazy ranges out of your hyper velocity driver. Um, and the reason this is so good is because it's that like constant ticking pressure against the enemy shields. Um, again, if your fleet maximizes range and you have steady officers, and they really use that range, this weapon shines. Up close, it is gonna get you bodied. Uh, don't use this weapon, don't try to mix it with safety overrides, reckless officers, aggressive officers. You are not gonna have a good time. Uh, next up is the ion weapon. So we have the ion beam. Love this weapon. Um, I love EMP damage in general, just because it makes the fight way easier. Um, basically, EMP damage is invaluable because it shifts the momentum of a fight um if your enemy can't fire back at you at you you don't have to worry about flux management as much which means you can apply even more pressure to your enemy so that if your enemy does ever fire back at you they're already fighting with a flux disadvantage um so by being able to apply that pressure to your enemy faster than they can you're more than likely going to win the fight. Um, even if they outclass you, if they have better weapons, you're probably going to win that fight just because you're starting with such an advantage. Um, I really like the beam weapon because in the player's hands, you can sweep an enemy ship back and forth with the ion beam. The AI isn't going to do that. The AI tends to focus on one point of the ship, um, usually the center of the ship, and just keep firing at it. So the beam is a little less effective. But uh, in the in the player's hands, you do have that option. So like you could sweep the entire side of a conquest and disable all those weapon systems really quickly, and then follow up with um, either a missile like a sabo, where's that? Like a sabo, or you can um, 
get in really close with like your frigates and pick the conquest apart something like that uh next up you have the ion cannon small energy weapon uh as far as small energies go these are really your only two choices antimatter blaster and the ion cannon um i really like the ion cannon it's cheap emp damage it's very easily spammable um if you don't have the flux for antimatter blaster use the ion cannon um you'll definitely appreciate the difference and then next finally you have the ion pulsar medium energy weapon um a very uncompetitive slot there's not very many good choices in medium energy weapons which makes the ion pulsar stand out even more um unlike its other ion counterparts the ion pulsar actually does a significant amount of damage uh in fact on the aurora builds which i'll pin a card um in the corner here i actually use the ion pulsar as one of the two weapons main weapons on the ship and like it's it's worth the slot definitely for sure um also the ion pulsar is slightly inaccurate which is actually an advantage because what will happen is as it fires it'll sway back and forth which just gives you more emp coverage across the the uh front of a ship so very good uh next up you have the annihilator pod this is the medium variant again for the same reasons for the other annihilator this just doesn't serve a purpose uh this one fires straight ahead which is a little better but again like the missiles don't do any damage so why would you use it right there's so many other better medium missiles in the game uh light assault gun it's okay what it does it's a small high explosive weapon uh high explosive ballistic the light auto cannon i don't know why you would use this when the light dual auto cannon works um light dual auto cannon has a range of 700 i believe does kinetic damage really good weapon system there it can be scaled with ballistic range finder and ballistic mastery so you can get like closer to 900 range just something silly like that um it's shooting almost as far as like your uh your heavy maulers and your hyper velocity drivers uh next up is one of my favorite weapon systems in the whole game um just like the heavy machine gun the light machine gun light dual machine gun is a cheat weapon it does kinetic damage for like no flux at all i think it's 0.12 flux something silly like that um what i use it for is on like a safety override ship I'll put this in my small ballistic slots to get cheap kinetic damage, and then I'll pair it with the assault chain gun to do my high explosive damage. Um, so this costs nothing to fire, and it fires very quickly and does a lot of kinetic damage, and this costs everything to fire. So when you pair these two together um, on something like an eradicator, you'll just melt enemy ships because they can't, they can't keep their shields up, and they're just taking a ton of uh, armor damage. So it's just a nice nice coupling there uh the light dual machine gun also works but um don't use it because you can easily get light dual machine guns um from the very start of the game they cost nothing i think like 500 credits or something like that and also you win them from combat all the time so you never really even have to buy them they're just they're so accessible so there's no reason to use the light one uh this is the light mortar uh, don't ever use this um, you can just use a light assault gun for a few more ordnance points. Um, this is inaccurate. It fires slow. Uh, it's flex efficient. It does a lot of high explosive damage for what it's worth. But, it, like, no. It goes putt-putt, which is so embarrassing. Uh, next up, you have the IR laser. I never use this weapon system, but I get why it exists. It's cheap damage. Um, it's energy damage, so it's good against armor hull and um shields and it's cheap um i don't know if it's flux efficient off the top of my head but it doesn't cost a lot of op and uh you can just spam them but i i don't know i don't i don't do enough like i would rather have an antimatter blaster or ion cannon and i don't see the point of the ir uh laser whatever ooh locust swarm 
boy, it, it, it's not at top of S tier. It, I don't even know if it's an S tier weapon. I just love this weapon so much. Um, large missile system does fragmentation damage, um, which normally nobody really cares about. Fragmentation damage is a meme, but my god, the Locust Swarm is so much fun to fire. Um, first of all, the way it works is it fires dozens and dozens of um, s what kind of missiles are they? They're not swarmer missiles, I don't think. Swarmer missiles, I think, are higher explosive. But it fires dozens and dozens of these missile systems, tons of them. They just coat the entire screen. Um, with something like ECCM package, watching them lock on with such precision and just beam towards the target is so terrifying um when they use them against you it is scary when you have like three or four of these on the battlefield it's so much fun it's pure chaos um the also the upside of the locust swarm is they do emp damage and like i said before emp damage is such an underrated stat um you really want these um well i mean you don't have to use them but if you can uh, definitely include them in your battlefield, uh, on the battlefield. Um, I used to run a meme build where I would put the Locust Swarmer on a champion in conjunction with, like, a plasma cannon. And I would just roll with, like, seven, eight champions into a fight, um, and then just, like, pure havoc. Um, just plasma cannons going off, raising enemy flux. And then uh, the Locust Swarm's just like plinking away um, once the Plaza Cannon deals damage to the armor. A lot of fun, not a good build, but uh, entertaining. It, it made fights uh, fun to watch. Um, long Range PD is unfortunately going to be our first victim. Uh, F tier. You would never use this. Um, the difference between Long Range PD and regular PD is that Long Range has double the distance for half the damage. But you never really need it. Like you never really need the uh, the extra range. You would just use regular PD. Um, that being said, in general, I do not care about point defense. Um, the way my fleets work is I use a safety overrides monitor to screen for my entire fleet. Um, if I use specialized ships for that role, that means across my entire fleet, I can cut out the ordnance points that I would spend on point defense. What that means is I get ships with better weapons, um, better vents, better capacitors, better hull mods, um, as opposed to using that um, because of the uh, ordnance points savings. So because I use monitors, I don't value point defense really at all. I get its purpose, and in a normal fleet, you need it, but for the way I composing my fleets in the ships that I use I don't I don't care for much for point defense next up is a mining laser um, you would never really use this weapon unless you're doing some kind of role play as like civilian ships or civilians turn rogue turn pirate whatever um, and this is all you have in the early game otherwise you it's not worth it um, it does do a pretty decent amount of damage um, and it's cheap. I believe it's one ordnance point to equip. But like I said before, your small energies are probably going to be ion cannons, antimatter blasters, maybe IR pulses or point defense. So you would never really use a mining laser. Uh, next up, we have the Mjolnir. I don't know enough about this weapon system to judge it accurately. I know it's an energy ballistic weapon, which is very unique. Um don't know i don't really see many builds incorporating the mjolnir and it doesn't scale with like energy weapon mastery or other energy scaling effects because it is a ballistic weapon so i'm gonna put it in c tier for now and if you do have a good mjolnir build recommend it in the comments and i'll take a look at it uh next up is the phase lance I never really used the phase lance before silent knights but after silent knights i have so much respect for this weapon system um, the way it works is it's a medium energy weapon that does uh, burst beam damage. Um, I don't think it does hard flux damage. I would have to check the tooltip. But uh, it does burst damage. Now, on a regular ship, 
this doesn't really matter so much because the AI is probably going to deflect it away with their shields. But on a phase ship, especially a phase ship that uses phase anchor, you can get so much value out of this. Um, in the AI's hands, they're going to use it to a decent effect, right? Like if you put them on a Doom or um, a Harbinger, they're going to use it to okay effect. Every time they pop out of phase space, uh, it'll be ready to fire because it does have a short cooldown. Um, and sometimes they'll catch the target out, uh, like with its shields down and actually like do damage to the armor and the hull. But in the player's hands, you have the perfect like opportunity to capitalize when a ship has its uh, shields down or its back turned or whatever, and you can pick apart a shield a uh, ship so easily with phase lances. Um, so in a lot of my gameplay, uh, I piloted the Doom with two phase lances equipped and whenever i could i would just like angle perfectly to already damaged section of an enemy ship and if not destroy it get it really low um and then the second um pass with phase lances would usually do the trick um so the mines would punch a hole in the armor and then the phase lances would clean up so really like that weapon system i don't know if it's that good um I'm still riding the high of Silent Knights, so that's why it's an S tier. Realistically, though, it's probably an A tier weapon. Because it only really belongs on face ships. Um, also pairs really nicely with Energy Weapon Mastery because these things are flux hungry. Like, very flux hungry. Ooh. Another really good weapon system, the Proximity Launchers. I'm going to put these in high S tier just to grab everyone's attention. Um, I don't know if they're high S tier, I just know that they're really good. Um, not many people are rolling with this, and I definitely encourage them to try them out. Uh, this is the Proximity Mine Launcher. What it does is it fires a, um, a small ordnance that shoots forward and detonates um, on impact or when it gets to a certain distance. Um, and it does a significant amount of high explosive damage, uh, which is one of the more valuable types of damage in the game um with missile specialization energy or missile specialization and uh, expanded missile racks as well as eccm package this thing essentially becomes a high explosive chain gun right like it is it does an insane amount of damage um much better than the assault chain gun so like if you have a proc if you have a universal um weapon slot a universal medium weapon slot and it's between the assault chain gun and the prox launcher i almost suggest the prox launcher over the assault chain gun like if you have eccm expanded missile racks missile specialization because you're gonna get way more value out of this so if i recall correctly the proximity launcher has 60 ordinances in its base form and then you multiply it by three because of missile racks and uh, missile specialization and you're talking about 180 mines out of one of these and on something like a dominator where you have three then that's what 540 mines that you can launch um I might be confusing it. It might be 20. It might be 20. I might be confusing it. Hold on. I don't want to give you the wrong numbers. Proximity. I'm a professional, by the way. Launcher. Star Sector. Yeah, it it comes with 50 base. So you can scale that to 150. Um, the Dominator has, like I said, three medium slots on the front of it. So that's 450 uh, mines that you can launch. Just an absurd amount of damage that you can get out very quickly. Uh, if you haven't used the launcher, go ahead and try it out. Um, 
good choose weapon just good weapon overall also it does a really good job even though it's high explosive it does a good job melting enemy shields just because of how fast it fires um the ai gets confused tries to block it will either overload or have to lower the shield and then once that happens it it, it melts the ship in front of it um so go ahead give that a try next up we have the pilot launchers uh, weak weak medium missile system not even worth really talking about um the only notable thing about it is it has an extremely long range. It can cover from one end of the battlefield to the other, and it does uh, EMP damage in conjunction to the frag damage that it does, but not worth it. Uh, we have the Plaza Cannon, obvious S tier weapon. I'm not exactly sure where it goes on the list, but it goes pretty high up. Um, Flux Hungry, but it does a lot of uh, energy damage it's a large energy weapon system uh, costs 30 ordnance points so you do have to consider that it's better on a capital ship than a cruiser but if your cruiser can support it like on a champion then you might as well go for it um pairs extremely well with energy weapon mastery um because i think its range is 600 or it might be 700 pretty sure it's 600 though um, and energy weapon mastery caps at 600 so no matter where you fire this from you're gonna hit your target and get that bonus damage um so really good there also if your ship has high energy focus paired with this good luck and good night to the enemy like on a sunder fool boy if you can get a plasma cannon sunder to work that is terrifying um yeah definitely s tier weapon uh, everyone uses it uh, this is the pulse laser. I don't really care about this weapon system. It's a good budget energy weapon um, for medium. If you can't afford a heavy blaster, you can use that. But it doesn't hit nearly as hard. Um, I'm not exactly sure where you use this. Next up is the railgun. Obviously, S tier weapon system. Um, has an incredible range. Costs 7 OP, I believe does kinetic damage at a distance um just good consistent kinetic damage and can also get scaled through the roof through ballistic weapon or ballistic range finder as well as ballistic mastery next up is the reaper um hands down one of the best weapon systems in the game um it just does a, a, a goofy amount of damage um since i have the wiki up already i might as well look up the reaper um the reaper does a base of 4,000 high explosive damage so against armor it's going to actually do 8,000 damage and against the shield it's going to do 2,000 damage even if you hit an enemy shield with the reaper um it's still definitely worth it um and you'll see the ai actually use reapers to um basically overload an enemy because the alternative is a ship will get cracked in half if it gets hit with a reaper usually one reaper will destroy a frigate um sometimes a reaper can destroy a high-tech ship if it's like a um, a high-tech destroyer um struggles usually doesn't always guarantee the one hit kill with a low-tech destroyer but sometimes it does and then like two reapers will destroy a cruiser um so yeah the trick is and the thing i'm still learning how to do is aim with a reaper um even though the reaper is unguided i definitely recommend ECCM package just so you can more reliably hit those shots and then once you get better uh cough cough i need to get better then uh, it just becomes a reliable um, weapon system to use to either get a quick easy overload on your enemy or finish them off so would strongly recommend that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Typhoon up here. Um, it's the same as the Reaper. It's just that you get better scaling out of the Typhoon. It's a medium. Uh, it comes with more weapon systems. Or it comes with more Reaper missiles in them. And then the Cyclone Reaper is undoubtedly, unquestionably, one of the best um, non-exotic weapon systems in vanilla. Um, this costs 26 ordnance points to equip, which is very high. Um, but first of all, you get 20 reapers out of one of these. Um, so that can be scaled up to 60. So you get um, 
60 Reapers, but the main thing is that they, or the main bonus and the reason why I think the high cost is justified is because you fire Reapers in tandem, which you can't do with any of these other systems. Because you fire Reapers in tandem, it doesn't give the enemy any time to react. Um, what I mean by that is if you fire one Reaper in sequence, I believe there's like a 8 second delay? Um, no, there's a 5 second delay between Reaper shots. So in that time, the opponent has time to vent, it can... Uh, lower its shields and burn off that flux that you uh, that you generated with the first reaper uh, if it took the first reaper to the armor it has plenty of time to raise its shields to tank the second one and vice versa but when you fire two reapers in tandem one of two things happen the both reapers impact on the shields causing an overload almost guaranteed unless you're fighting um, a capital ship or uh, they'll both strike the enemy's armor because it's already fluxed up and it can't uh, It can't risk tanking both to the shield um, Or you just catch it by surprise and if it's not a cruiser that's heavily armored or it's not a capital ship You're probably gonna destroy that ship easily And because you have 20 of these and realistically if you're gonna use it, you should probably scale it So you'll have 60 of these Two Reapers out of 60 is well worth the cost to instantly delete any ship almost any ship on the battlefield um, and you can have multiple of these on certain ships in the game like some ships in the game have multiple large missile slots uh, like the legion 14 um, a very special uh, redacted ship i'm not going to talk about um, you can get a lot of these on those and it's definitely worth it um, moving on from there is the assault chain gun. This is the bread and butter to a lot of my builds. Um, if you watch Rum Runners, you saw how I built my eradicators using the assault chain gun. Does a, a silly amount of high explosive damage very quickly. Um, has a range of 450, so you have to play around that. But like I mentioned before, it pairs well with the heavy machine gun, um, which also has a range of 450. So this will do the kinetic damage, and then this will do your high explosive damage. Um, so. I mean, with like, I use this on every build I can, to like whenever I can. Uh, next up is the Sabopod. Uh, oof, I'm gonna have to make more room up here. It's a S tier weapon. Um, you get twelve of these, I believe. Um, Sabo SRM Pod. I should have never opened the wiki because now I'm just fact checking everything. You get 12 of these per pod. Um, so you can scale it up to 36. Um, and the cool thing about the pod, unlike the regular missile variants, is the pod fires two sabos at the same time. So similar to the Cyclone Reaper, um, being able to fire your missiles in tandem Less of an impact because if you have the singles or if you have the smaller ones, you can fire them uh, rapid fire. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put this in B tier. I'm gonna go ahead and put this in S tier uh, because you can fire them at the same time. Um, when they impact a shield, they'll usually overload the target. Um, they do a, a ridiculous amount of kinetic damage. Uh, they do 200 damage per shrapnel. There's five bits of shrapnel in each. Um, so that's 1,000 damage times two, because there's two of these when they fire. That's uh, 2,000 damage. And then um, because it's against a shield, uh, you double it. So it's actually 4,000 damage. So from one round of a Sabopod burst, you're doing 4,000 damage. That's... That's pretty significant. Um, you're gonna overload a lot of cruisers with that. You're gonna overload destroyers for sure, and frigates don't stand any chance. Um, they also do EMP damage, so even if your opponent lowers their shields, um, be, the way the Sabo works is they fire shrapnel like a shotgun. They'll cover a lot of the ship um, and get some pretty reliable uh, knock of, uh, weapons offline. Um, and then if you grab I believe it's a combat elite skill that lets you do double damage to weapons and engines. You're going to knock those weapon systems out for a long time. 
Um, just leave your enemy as a sitting duck. Uh, next up is the salamander. I'm gonna move this higher. Uh, maybe not that high. Maybe over here. Uh, next up is the salamander. Um, I don't know why you would ever use this weapon system. Um, it just gets shot down. It's a waste of time. The enemy has way too much point defense for this thing to be reliable. Um, the long cooldown on the salamander doesn't do it any service. Uh, I mean, you would never use this. Uh, in fact, you would you would never ever use this because um, there's better small weapons, there's better small missiles in the game. And then same thing with the pod, which is even worse. You fire two salamanders uh, for even longer cooldown. Um, there's way better mediums in the game, so I don't I don't know why you would ever use this. Uh, Arbalist is okay. It's just like the heavy mortar though. Replace it whenever you can. It does kinetic damage for a medium slot. Uh, the Atropos missiles, just like the harpoons, are really good. Um, good in the AI's hands. But the trick is, and also with the harpoons, I don't know if I mentioned this before, is you need to reliably overload enemy ships. Because if you don't, they'll just fire these into the enemy. Not always, unless they're like reckless. Uh, but sometimes they'll just waste them against enemy shields. So you do have to get out ahead of your ships uh, and overload the enemy or knock off their point defense. Um, don't use the single variant of the Atropos, it's kind of a waste of time, same with the Harpoon, uh, it doesn't scale nearly as well. Uh, next up is the Auto Pulse Cannon, um, phenomenal weapon system, scales with uh, expanded magazines, what it does is it's a large energy system, um, it stores charges, uh, base I believe is 30 and then with expanded magazines it scales up to 45. And when it gets in range of the enemy, it imparts all those charges, um, shooting them with a very small delay in between each round. Uh, once it expends it, then it builds those charges back up. So really good on um, a certain classified uh, ship. I won't say more than that for spoilers. Um, you can use two of these at a time, surprise the enemy, and then disappear. Uh, wait for your charges to build back up, especially if you use um, a certain hull mod, and then pop out and surprise your enemy again. I didn't use it in Silent Nights, um, but it is one of the viable builds that you can do it with. Um, you can also use the Auto Pulse Cannon on a Sunder, which is a classic. Uh, there used to be something called a built-in safety overrides Auto Pulse cannon sunder which back when you could build in safety overrides you would build it into a sunder and then um, you would mitigate the flux cost of your auto pulse cannon and zip around the battlefield with a very juiced very angry sunder uh, those days sadly are behind us um, I really wish they weren't but it was a fun build while it lasted I believe it's still on YouTube if you just type um, BSO sunder uh, it should pop up. Next up is a mining laser. Uh, this is probably going to surprise a lot of people. I actually think it's an A tier weapon system, but uh, it is a skill based weapon system. So, just like the antimatter blaster uh, costs a lot of flux of fire and you have to make your shots count, the mining laser is the same thing. This thing does not do well in the AI's hands unless you have a lot of them on the battlefield, but you probably shouldn't do that. Um, there are better weapon systems that you can give the AI, but in the player's hands, if you pilot something like a wolf or a phase ship or um, even a Hyperion, something that's very mobile and can flank the enemy, the mining laser chunks. Like, it hits harder than a heavy blaster. Um, and with a very low refire delay, uh, I mean, not very low, but lower than an antimatter blaster. It's actually competitive with it. Um, the medium energy weapon slot is lax. Like, it's not a lot of competition there. So, you could fit this in and then f pilot like a wolf or something and uh, slap this on a wolf. Um, 
I did that in the early game in my Zero to Hero series. Um, it was fun until I got a real ship that I could use. Uh, but definitely give it a try. Um, it's good practice. It just makes you better in combat. Um, if you do a couple dog fights with a mining blaster wolf, uh, you'll just you'll only make yourself a better pilot. Next up is the heavy blaster. Um, this one does very well in the AI's hands. I think everyone's pretty much used a heavy blaster at this point. It's a medium energy weapon. Does a ton of damage. Is very flux hungry. Pairs exceptionally well with energy weapon mastery. Um, would recommend it on pretty much any builds. Uh, the Aurora, like I mentioned before, um, uses both the ion pulser and the heavy blaster in tandem to rip apart ships. Uh, it also used reapers and a cyberpod. So all the S tier weapons and an antimatter blaster. Yeah, literally all the S tier weapons on the Aurora, uh, which is why I really love that ship. Next up, we have the Breach Pod. Uh, I don't think I've ever used that weapon system. I don't think I've ever. Mm. I don't know why you would use uh, Well, I know why you would use it, but I don't know why you would. So its purpose is, it is a missile system, it's a high explosive missile system that doesn't do a lot of damage, but it gets bonus damage against armor. Um, its job is to strip armor on a ship very quickly. So in theory, it would be good against capital ships, um, things like the Onslaught, uh, things like a Legion, but the problem is, and what always happens is, those ships are coded in point defense. So your breaches aren't going to get through unless you're using something to like screen the point defense or knock the point defense offline. But if you're doing that already, then why wouldn't you use a Reaper, a Prox Launcher, Harpoons? Like, you get where I'm going with that? Like... The purpose of the breach is to strip armor, but if you already have the point defense knocked offline, then you might as well use the big guns. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know why you would use breaches. Maybe you don't have access to these. I, I don't know. D tier. Uh, next up is the burst PD. I, again, like I said before, I don't use point defense because I have my monitors, but I recognize that the Burst PD is an exceptional point defense weapon system. Um, the Heavy, I'm going to put in a tier below, just because I think the Burst PD does enough on its own. Um, no need to dedicate a medium energy slot to point defense when you can use it offensively. Um, a small slot, though, to give up for Burst PD makes sense. Uh, that being said, the Burst PD does better on the sides of the ship um, rather than the rear of the ship just because sometimes your Burst PD doesn't have enough time. It does a lot of damage, but sometimes it just doesn't have enough time to protect your engines, so you might as well put it on the side where it gets more opportunities to uh, protect your ship. Also, it does really good at shredding uh, fighters, which tend to circle your ships. So... Uh, for that reason, you want to put it more towards the sides rather than the flank. And you want to save your front for like your antimatter blasters and your ion cannons. Uh, next up is the Devastator. I don't use this weapon system that often, but it's pretty good. Um, I, 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 it's probably S tier, but I just don't use it enough. So I'm going to put it in mid A tier. What it does is it's a large ballistic uh, and it's a large ballistic weapon system that does high explosive damage. Um, it works like a giant black shotgun. Um, its range is unpredictable, like it detonates at random ranges and its accuracy is terrible. Uh, I think literally in the game it says terrible. It'll fire within its cone and its range just randomly. You can't predict it. Um, but it's really good at what it does. Uh, it does burst damage. Like uh, the, uh, shot, the shells that it does fire explode in a little area. So it's really, really good at countering, uh, carriers. It's exceptional at swatting out missiles. Um, yeah, it's really good as point defense. 
Also, uh, interestingly, on a Dominator with Ballistic Mastery, uh, this thing chunks <laughs> at really close ranges. Um, if you get in the opponent's face with this Devastator Cannon and every single shot hits, they are not going to have a good time uh, at all. Even against shields, it does a significant amount of damage. So, uh, yeah. If you want to try that build, I don't think I did a build, a ship showcase on that version of the Dominator, but I have used it in Rum Runners. So if you want to take a peek at that, uh, it'll, I, actually, I don't know how I would show that to you. I might do a ship showcase. We'll see. But uh, you can you can go on YouTube and type Devastator Dominator or something like that. Or actually, it'll be on the Discord. Uh, Mr. G, a very prominent member on my Discord, uh, has that build. So I'll link it in the description below. Uh, pin it as a comment also, maybe. Next up is the Dual Flat Cannon. Um, again, it's kind of like the baby version of the Dominator. Uh, the Devastator. It's a medium ballistic. Um, good point defense. I don't use point defense, but uh, I just I know universally it's pretty good. Uh, the dual, the flat cannon on the other hand, don't use it. Um, just use the dual. They cost similar in OP. Um, this one is just better in every single way. Next up, we have the heavy needler. Um, actually, I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna put it in A tier. I put it in high A's here. Um, it's a medium ballistic, which is a competitive slot, but uh, I think it's worth it. Does a lot of kinetic damage. The problem is, though, that the AI knows this, and it's whenever it can, it's going to um, let the Needler just splash harmony against its uh, armor, where it's not going to do any damage whatsoever. So uh, you just have to be aware of that. Uh, also, it fires in bursts with a relatively, um, eh, with a longer cooldown than you would want. Um, so just be aware of that. Next up is the Storm Needler. I don't ever use this weapon system, um, but it is fun. You can slap it again on that Dominator. And uh, it fires like a continuous round of kinetic damage. Whereas the needlers uh, have that delay, I'm gonna put the small in uh, S tier because small ballistics it makes more sense. Um, so unlike the needler and the heavy needler, the storm needler just keeps firing, um, doing that kinetic damage. I, I think I think the reason I don't use it, if I call, recall correctly, I think this costs like twenty five ordnance points. Something ridiculously high, and I, at that ordinance point cost, you you can't justify that. Uh, next is the Gauss Cannon, which does kinetic damage. Um, a lot of people like this weapon. I don't. I don't care for it at all. Um, it's the pinnacle of the Pike defense. Or not really pike defense, but the pike strategy, which you just want really long ranges. Um, I think it has the highest range of the game at 1200 range. Uh, it does a lot of kinetic damage, but the problem is it costs its flux base flux efficiency, I believe, is 1.71, which means for every point of damage you do, it costs 1.7 flux to fire, which is not a good trade off. Uh, I don't think I mentioned this before with the weapons, with very many weapons, but basically the better the flux efficiency, the better the weapon is because, um, because of the tug of war nature of combat, the less flux you spend fluxing out your opponent, the more damage basically you get to do to them quicker. Um, the less shielding they have, the more damage you get to do to their armor, and then the quicker you can peel their armor the quicker you can destroy their hull. Uh, the purpose of the Gauss Cannon, though, is to sit at really long ranges and be fired from your capital ships and just put, like, that constant pressure on the enemy. Um, 
that's not how I design my fleets. That's not how I play the game. So the Gauss Cannon never features in any of my fleets. If I'm using capital ships, I'm using something like an Onslaught or a Legion 14 that's like right up in the enemy's grill. Uh, so I don't never really need the Gauss Cannon. Um, next up is a Grab Beam, which is probably the worst weapon in the game. Um, and I hear I already know what you're gonna type. Oh, just use it with that one hull mod that turns uh, beam weapons into um, into a hard flux uh, damage dealing weapon system. No, don't do that. That is bait. That is bad bait. Uh, that is not only a waste of ordnance points, that is a waste of time, and that is going to get your ships destroyed. Like, all right, so. The grab beam is bad for like nine different reasons. Let's just focus on like two or three of them. First of all, um, it does kinetic damage, which beam weapons don't do any hard flux damage naturally to shields. So what is the point? When they lower their shield, all that damage that you did goes away. In fact, it's worse than that. They don't even have to lower their shield. That damage, if it's not enough to overcome their natural flux dissipation, is pointless. It, it, it's less than pointless. You are generating flux on your ship while they are suffering no effect. Like, that is so stupid. Um, you will destroy yourself doing that. Next up, it doesn't do a lot of kinetic damage at all. Um, because it's a beam weapon, beam weapons naturally don't do a lot of damage to balance them because they have really long ranges. Why are you wasting your time with this? <laughs> if 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 the AI, which it usually doesn't, tanks this on the shield, it's going to tickle the shield. Like, it's not going to make a difference. Um, more than likely, what's going to happen is the AI is going to lower their shields because they understand that this is a kinetic weapon and not an energy weapon. Um, and it's going to tank that damage harmlessly against its armor. Like, you are wasting your time with this. And then, it, like I alluded to earlier, if you convert this using the whole mod, um, I think it's called Optic Laser or something. Um, what's it called? Optic. Not Advanced Optics. It's the other one. Uh, what is the whole mod called? Oh, it's escaping me. It's not advanced optics. Advanced optics gives you longer ranges. High scatter amplifier. Okay, if you put high scatter amplifier on your grab beam, converting it to dealing hard flux damage, who cares, right? It's doing an insignificant amount of damage already. Like, you're cutting the the beam range, which is the one advantage that it does have, which is the one good thing that it has going for it. You're cutting the beam range down so you can do an insignificant amount of hard flux damage to an opponent. Why? Why would you do this to yourself? Just use a better weapon. Just use literally any other energy weapon. Also, it's a medium. Use an ion pulser. Use an ion beam. Use a phase lance. Use anything else. Literally, you're wasting your time if you use a grab beam. If you do like this weapon system, please go ahead and explain in the comments why I'm wrong. I, I will upvote you and hard it, and I will still never use this weapon system. I, don't use a grab beam. It is a bad weapon. Okay, moving on. The Paladin PD is king of point defense. Um, I never use it. I recognize that it is a good weapon system. However, it being a large energy weapon is kind of overkill for what it does. Also, it competes with the plasma cannon, the auto pulse cannon. Um... 
the attack and lance which you haven't gotten to yet uh it is the king of what it does undoubtedly but what it does doesn't justify its cost right like you shouldn't give up a large energy slot for defense you should be offensive with it uh, next up is the hammers so the hammer barrage is really good i just never use it um, I recognize that it's good. It's good against me whenever I die to it. Um, it fires the hammer missiles in quick sequence. It fires four of them. It has a very short cooldown, so you can spam them. Um, you can scale the damage to the roof with uh, missile specialization if you make it elite. Um, yeah, uh, it's a good weapon system. And, it, and the hammer fires very quickly, so you're more than likely going to hit your target. Uh, next up is the hammer duels. I don't remember if it's a medium slot or a small that's been doubled. If it's a small that's been doubled, it's definitely A tier. If it's a medium, which I don't think it is, then it belongs in B tier. I think it's a small though. Uh, let's assume it's a small, uh, and it goes in A tier. Um, same thing, uh, the small single goes next to the other small singles. Um, don't use them, use the higher version because they just, the higher versions scale better. Uh, next is the squall. I love this missile system. Um, it's not, it's, uh, I want to put it in S tier, but I know it's not an S tier weapon system. Um, the Squall just provides constant kinetic pressure. Uh, really long ranges, does kinetic damage. It's a large, um, so it is competing with the Cyclone Reaper, the Merv, um, the Locust, but it is really nice. Um, it also does EMP damage for what it's worth, and you do get a lot of Squalls. Um, so if you scale it with expanded missile racks and missile specialization, you're pretty much going to end the fight before you use up all your squalls um it's good good on a legion for suppression um good on any capital ship that can support it really if you don't want to use the mervs if you want to be a little more defensive a little long range then you can apply the squall and then uh just tune the rest of your fleet to use high explosives next up is the swarmer uh it goes in the bog of d tier well, actually, it, it it goes in the in the troughs of C tier. Um, it actually serves a purpose. It's good for anti um, fighter capabilities. Like these will, um, if they impact with a fighter, they'll usually destroy it. Um, they also can overload point defense, uh, and they do when okay amount of damage uh, against a frigate they're a nuisance they're really good at um forcing frigates to put their shields up so you can catch them um they're good in the pursuit phase against civilian ships so they actually have a, some purpose next up is attacking lance um i think everybody knows about this weapon system emp damage tons of just energy damage um devastating really uh you either use this or have been the target of attacking lance and you know when you get hit it hurts a lot um you kind of have to have your shields up and the cool thing about the tech lance is it's emp damage arcs um based on your hard flux so if you generate a lot of flux against your opponent or sorry any flux level i don't think it has to be hard flux um if you generate a lot of flux on your opponent because you're using kinetic weapons your tachyon lance will jump over the shield and start doing damage to the enemy through the shield uh, which gets around the um some of the downsides of using energy weapons and then also the emp damage arcs which means it jumps once the system is overloaded it jumps to the next one then the next one until all the emp damage has been dissipated um i mean that's uh... It's a, it's a great weapon system. I, I don't know what more to say. Uh, 
two of these to the same spot will render a ship useless. Um, sometimes it can destroy a capital ship. I had a really cool Apogee build, which used the Tachyon Lance, which I'll link in the uh, link as a card up here. Uh, basically, it used Energy Weapon Mastery and Safety Overrides, as well as Hardened Shields, to reliably generate a lot of flux and then um, get all of the bonus damage from Tachyon Lances and Antimatter Blasters. Or was it the Plasma Cannon? It might have been the plasma cannon now that I think about it. But it, it was one of these two. But anyway, uh, you get a ton of bonus damage from using energy weapon mastery with a uh, safety overrides tachyon lance. Next up is the tactical laser. I, I don't feel one way or another about this. Um, actually, I'm going to put it in D tier. It just does a significant amount of damage. It just burns your flux for no real reason. You don't need it. Next up is the Thumper. Uh, the only saving grace is it's not a grab beam. Otherwise, it would be... Uh, you know what? These two can fight at the bottom for worse weapon system. Uh, the Thumper does... The Thumper does fragmentation damage. Um, but it's not point defense. So it's like... Why would you use... Fra okay, so... Fragmentation damage does 25% damage against armor, shields, and hull. Or, sorry, armors and shields. But it does 100% damage. It doesn't even get bonus damage. It does 100% damage against hull. The idea behind fragmentation damage is that if you use it against an enemy ship, it'll very quickly destroy a ship that's already been wounded. However, why would you not just use high explosive damage which doesn't get a penalty to armor or to hull right you, you see where i'm going with this you would just finish off a ship using your assault chain guns your reapers your harpoons hammers um even energy weapons you would use those weapons first before you use a dedicated weapon that does the same amount of damage. Yes, the Thumber does a lot of fragmentation damage. It does uh, 1300 fragmentation damage, which is more than any other weapon in the game. But like, who cares? It's useless against shields. It's useless against armor. It only is useful against hulls, which is also the same as every other weapon system in the game. So, don't use the Thumper. Waste of time. Yeah. If you do have a good Thumper build, let me know in the comments, and then I'll just explain why you're wrong, and why you should be using a better build. Uh, and then finally, we have the Vulcan Cannon. Um, it's not an S-tier weapon. It's probably A-tier. Um, exceptional point defense. This is an example of where fragmentation damage is good. Um, against missiles and strike craft, they don't have a lot of armor and they don't have any shield or they rarely have shields. So the Vulcan cannon makes quick work of those weapon systems. Um, in addition to that, uh, I use them to cheat out even more damage. So if you pair them with like a light machine, gun, light dual machine gun, heavy machine gun, uh, or an assault chain gun, whatever, like um, once you do clear away the armor you get a bonus damage on top of whatever damage you're already doing with your assault chain gun. So in this case, it supplements a weapon system. It's not your damage dealer. So therefore it's justified. Also it does double duty as point defense. So uh, it's better than the thumper in this case. And I believe it costs like 0 0.08 flux to fire. So like, yeah, it's, it's ridiculously worth it. Um, usually auto include, uh, you can extend its range with ballistic range finder. Um, but more than likely what I use it for is on a safety override ship. I'll just pair it with like a assault chain gun, like on an eradicator, I'll pair these two together. So also with a heavy machine gun. So that once I strip away the armor and the shield, uh, the Vulcan cannon just does its thing. 
um, free damage. It just makes sense. Anyway, that's the tier list. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Um, the video is an hour long, so I'm not going to rearrange these. But uh, feel free to comment below why I'm wrong. Um, I will like any comment uh, and then explain to you why you're wrong, actually. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tier list. Um, as far as the channel goes, I'm going to take a break for a little while. Uh, think of what I want my next series to be. Um, as soon as I know, you guys will know. Um, I'll announce it and then begin recording more Star Sector comment content. Um, I might also, in the meantime, release either more guides or like smaller scope videos. Um, there may be other games potentially uh if you guys want to see that some of the other games that i'm playing like uh, vicky 3 has taken a lot of my time i play a lot of path of exile as well i'm really enjoying the league in path of exile um so i might show some of that content but uh yeah as far as star sector goes i am going to take a break from it just because it's hard to find the time right now to make it um editing does take a while unfortunately and then with my job, it it's difficult. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy the tier list. Hope you guys enjoy the the uh, holidays. And then um, yeah, hope you enjoy the channel and the time you're having here. Uh, I do appreciate the support. Uh, we're at 2,500 sub subs we're at the time of making this video. I didn't expect that. Um, so once again, thank you for all the support. But yeah, other than that, grumpy out.